You're listening to Magrito Podcast Network, celebrating the culture of Chicanos and Latinos one story and voice at a time. Listen to more Magrito Podcast Network shows over at magrito.net. Connect on social, on Instagram and Facebook at Magrito. The Magrito Podcast Network. Three, two, one. Brought to you by Fuck It today. Eddie, what's up, man? <laughs> hey, what's up, dude? What's on? What's going on? I mean, first and foremost, it's nice seeing you in physical like life, like in real physical meat. life without uh, any screens or anything yeah. in front of us. Yeah, because I mean, there's one thing about being in the screen, and there's one thing about being here. You know, like right. here, I can kind of like pick up on cues that I normally can't. Gotcha. You, have, you know, through internet, sometimes you're lagging, and it's or, or I'm lagging, and it's just like pixels. I'm like, what the guy do right now? <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? But yeah, you know, um, yeah, man, it's been good. Thank you for having me on. No worries, man. I've been we've been talking about this for for quite some time, so I'm glad to to actually have you on versus having virtual yeah stuff. And and it's always good to to meet somebody that like a, a podcaster that is in LA. Yeah. But um, you know, hey man, we're doing it. And it's We're funny because it. I haven't actually done an episode. I haven't recorded since the last time we recorded, which was, I, I want to say, like, February or, like, March or something. I'm bringing you out of uh, retirement <laughs> for the second time. <laughs> for the second time. Right. And this is one of the last times I've seen because I'm going to be recording. I mean, spooky, spooky month, October. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So I'm, I'm moving forward. Um, I mean, it's, I've just been doing a lot of stuff. Like, it might seem like. You know, sometimes people think like because you're not showing what you're doing, you're not doing anything. Yeah, and it's easy to, for people to be like, "Hey, this guy's lagging or this thing's dead." Which, hey, I I can see that a lot of people can assume like, about like my podcast because I haven't had any activity over the last. It's gonna be nine months, you know. So nine months. It's been nine months since I last released an episode. I released it on I want to say December thirty first. Um, and then I mean I you know we briefly spoke about it. I mean, actually, it was a big segment in the last episode. About it was a NFTs. huge segment. <laughs> it was like an it was hour. Whole episode, yeah. It was like an hour and 30 minutes on just NFTs and artwork and stuff. And, and you know, that was just a tip because since then, now I can consider myself like, you know, intermediate level. Like, I'm almost not an expert yet, but man, the, the, the journey has been, you know, it's only nine months, but then, man, it feels like I've been in here for like a couple of years now. And like, it's it, just a space move so fast that. Uh-huh. Like it, it feels like you know, shit just happens quickly. Really? Yeah. So it's it's crazy. So I, you know, I've been I've been involved in that among other projects, um, but um, you know, I like to say that I like to take breaks in between podcasts sometimes because it gives me a time to kind of like just kind of live okay. life, you know, and not have to worry about having to meet a certain schedule. And I think I, I think at the end of the day, or during that time, I give myself enough room to open up to new experiences or. If it's not new, if it's something I've been doing, I kind of just get a new perspective on it. And it allows me to come back to the podcast and be like, like I'm back, you know, fresh, like gotcha. ready to give you more stories. You know, if, if my perspective is changing something else during the whole time frame, then here it is. But, you know, that that's personally why I like taking those breaks. Um, I just feel it gives me time to kind of grow and not, you know, overwork myself. And at the same time, not kind of, you know just produce content for the sake of producing you know and it's to me it's always been about quality gotcha know? yeah uh talk about your talk about your podcast i'm gonna fix something up yeah, here very quick sure. okay uh i mean for those people who you know haven't heard of my podcast social primate podcast uh just a quick little background i started back in like 2016 uh and since then it's been a solo show you know for the most part i take care of everything uh and it's been a it's been a journey you know meeting new people uh you know Still up to this day, just too many people like, you know, you invited me to your, you know, your studio, your home. And it's like, dude, like we're, we barely know each other. Yeah. You know, and for, you know for, for people to be at that level of comfort, I think it takes a lot. And uh, it speaks a lot through character when you, when you have conversations with somebody, you know, but um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the podcast. I mean, I'm open to talk about anything in terms of that too. Cause, uh, you know, I feel like, uh, especially now in this kind of age, if, you know, censoring and the whole not kind of speaking your mind is, you know, it's been an issue. I think we're all kind of tired of hearing that whole topic, but at the same time, it's like something that we got to keep remembering to challenge. Cause you know, who else is just going to talk about random things, you know, drugs and NFTs, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like we need those perspectives too, you know? 
you're used to doing uh podcasts in person right like on like solely with your show is it in is it an in-person deal or is it typically something you do over the internet uh no for the most part i mean before covid for sure it was just physical like there was no need unless i had somebody from like abroad like the uk or something i'd be like hey we gotta zoom and do something figure it out but um for the most part it's been in person i I prefer that you know it just kind of gives me like i mentioned earlier the opportunity to kind of pick up on cues and right you know when things aren't kind of going the right way or or if they aren't um and web was kind of tricky at first you know especially with the whole pandemic stuff (laughs) like people will have like microphones but they would just be their airpods or their you know wireless or wired headphones and it's like you hear all the the moving and the shuffling, <laughs> and then you're like, damn it. It just makes it a little harder for, like, audio to sound clearer, you know? Yeah. You know? For, like you mentioned, I, I like to have the show um, kind of raw. Like, just whatever happens stays in the podcast, so. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> but you've done you've done a couple, right? I, I've heard you on uh, Kickback Podcast LA with, uh, oh, with like, Chris. Yeah, with Chris. Yeah. Um, we did the whole, like, it was like five of us in one podcast. Really? Yeah, that one was an interesting because you know, I try to get through that man, but uh, it's like four fucking hours. <laughs> yeah, it's it like far, three or four fucking hours. Yeah, dude. At some point, people zone out. I was one of those. I was just way <laughs> too high. I was just like just <laughs> listening at this point. They're like, "Hey, what's going on with you?" I'm like, "Nah, man, I'm, I'm yeah, it. can't keep up with those guys." Yeah, and plus you need a there, there's like a certain rhythm that you need to like pick up on during. Yeah. If you have like. At least three or more than that. There's like a certain rhythm that you just have to like follow. Yeah, no, to I, insert stuff in there. And then like, I guess some people like I guess if they don't know how to read each other, it's a little hard for them to kind of, you know, if everybody's not in the same line of sense of humor or something like that. Yeah. Like you kind of you kind of feel like you have to tread, you know, lightly, you know. And uh, it's fun in games and all that stuff, but I think at the same time you just got to remember like, hey man, we're just here to have fun, you know. Like that, that's all what it's about, you know. Uh, and I'm, I'm surprised, you know, sometimes it's like difficult to have to manage so many people at once. But I think once you kind of allow yourself to be like, hey, I'm just hanging out with the dudes. Like, let's just make, make, make let this happen. You know, it's just yeah. nothing but vibes, you know? Yeah. Especially when you start to like overthink <laughs> and then it just it just takes it sucks the fun out of what you're doing. Yeah. See, that's where I kind of feel like I get to at some point with with podcasting. I just feel like, OK, I'm going to. Kind of you know step back. I don't want to burn it out. I like I I love doing it. I I really really enjoy doing it. Like you know just driving out here just reminded me of like not having done it for so long. I'm just like yeah, you know, it feels like a little adventure. Yeah, you know to get to this point here, and then at the end of the day, you know you walk out of here. At least for me, like podcast just feels like yeah, I got a bunch of topics out of my head, out of my system, and now I feel yeah. refreshed, ready to take on to the next one. You know, um. So yeah, that's where I kind of stand with that like it's something i enjoy i don't like i don't want to burn out from it yeah but at the same time i, I wouldn't want to keep putting out shows and just, yeah just, you know again the quality stuff to me i I'd rather have a, one good conversation in one month than 10 20 of them and just kind of be like you're kind of repeating yourself a few times it's gotcha like, you know, yeah that's at least for me you know oh okay i see not not in the sense like burning yourself out like physically being tired but also like with topics and and conversations uh yes in a sense okay. yeah you know because i mean you know nowadays it's everybody has a podcast you know i think we all know that you know and unless you kind of you know just bring something kind of new to the table it's kind of harder for you to kind of stand out so i think you know if, if you're just but at the same time if you're focusing just on that like trying to be like oh, i want to outshine everybody mm-hmm. i think it gives you the 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 clear mind to really do what you would love, you know, because at that point you're chasing something else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Basically yeah. just doing it just out of the pure, you know, essence of doing something. Yeah. And, and liking what you're doing. Yeah. You know, and, and again, it's nice to get the numbers. You know, yeah. I think we all both know, like, once you, we hit like a hundred mark or a thousand mark, you're like, yeah, it feels right. good. But, um, you know, you know, if there's something that I learned during the last nine months through, from just the podcast itself, um, and I guess just if I was to go kind of like a little personal level, the last nine months, I cleansed myself of a bunch of shit. Like, you know, I went on, I, you know, it sounds simple. It sounds like kind of super simple, but I went on Instagram. I went on my social media accounts, started on following people that were like, people are just kind of not bringing anything to your life outside of just kind of like seeing your videos and like, it's like, okay, 
you know, if you don't want to erect, that's cool, you know, but at that, at that point, like, you don't need to be involved in my life, you know, yeah. like, just unfollow them or, you know, whatever you got to do. At the same time, I took a reflection. I took time to reflect on the relationships that I had with friends and all this stuff or people that I thought were, mm, you know, homies or whatever you want to call them, acquaintances. And I was like, you know what? I, I don't need these type of people in my life. You know, I think at some point or at a specific age, you're like, you know, you, you, you we waste so much energy on things that you don't want to keep wasting energy on people who don't match that or who are just kind of, uh, I don't know how to say it, like not life suckers, but like, no, it just absolutely. feels like they're yeah, life suckers. Life suckers. <laughs> they suck the life out of you. Yeah. You know, I think we, I, you know, the people in this room can, you know, find some person that it's like, damn, you know, that's, I don't want to have this relationship because it's toxic in one way or another or whatever it can be, you know? And, I, I took the time to kind of, you know, cleanse myself from that, I think. And I think it allowed me to focus more on other stuff and trying to, uh, or f- what I'm trying to say here, um, trying to refocus my focus into what I kind of wanted to be for myself, you know. And one of the reasons was that I felt like the podcast at some point were just becoming conversations that I needed to have just because it pleased certain audience members or certain people. So it stopped being a reflection of what I was interested in. You know, like I I still, I listen to the conversations I've had and I love the conversations, but at some point I was just like, man, am I asking this just to kind of like get certain reactions for people? Or am I asking this because I'm legit curious about it? So, you know, it's just these things that you kind of take, you take so much time off that you have the time to think about it. Yeah. You, you, you had that nine months to reflect on how long were you doing the podcast for? Um, it's, I've been doing it since 2016, 2016. And like how many years was that? Like four, four years, actually like maybe five. Cause I, I went through all right. 2020 and so, 2021. So five years and nine months, you kind of reflected on those five years and yeah. you made certain decisions on like the page and just the overall of like what you really want. Yeah. No. From and, it. and yeah, exactly. Like it, it's just that moment to just clear your head, you know, it feels like taking Damn. a psychedelic trip, but in real life and you're like, dude, I got to make this <laughs> decision sober. And you know, I think yeah. not that your decisions on drugs aren't big. Cause I, I think those are powerful messages, but I think there's, there's also strength in the idea that you can just in your sober state be like, yo, you know what? I got to make these changes, you know? And I think that takes a little, not to give anybody else credit who's doing it, but it, I think it takes a different type of willpower as well, you know? And, Absolutely. Uh, I think stopping something that you've been going on for five years, stopping for like a, a like a break or whatever the case may be, that's pretty like, like that's... Like if you're on a momentum, yeah, you know, thing, and just taking a step back and looking at your mo- momentum, even when, depending the speed mm-hmm. of it, like it, that's that's difficult. That's difficult to say, hey, like I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna recharge, I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna reflect on yeah. the past five years of something that I've created. Your brand. Yeah. And yeah, that's like hard. little baby, you know. Your baby. You're stopping. You're going back and saying, hey, baby, I'm sorry, but, you know, I'll come back to you, but just let me <laughs> let me focus on, on something else. Yeah. No, and I think it's healthy to do that. I know, you know, people may be like, oh, well, you take too much time off. People are going to kind of forget you have to start all over. But again, that comes to the whole thing is like you. Yeah. What do you what do you say to that? What do you say to people that they say, oh, you're taking a, a too much of a long break? Or your even one break is is terrible. Like, what, what do you what do you even say to that? I mean, for sure, like I would say it for your mental health, people. I think it's it's uh, I think it's needed. Again, you whatever you're doing, no matter how much you love it, at some point you're gonna be like, okay, fuck, I gotta take a moment to take a deep breath. Yeah. You know? And that's with anything, right? That's not, with anything. Not not just the brand that you're working on. Not just it, it could just be people too. It, exactly yeah you can take time to use kind of you know hey i'm gonna step away from this group of people for a couple months mm-hmm. and then in a few months i'm gonna come back hey if we're still in the same page and you know fuck it if not then yeah. we're like hey you know man i knew you good luck but you know we're gonna move on we have to move on separate right. ways yeah basically it's the relationship that you have with people and relationship relationships that you have with tangible things that are not people 
Like, because mm-hmm. if you think about it, dude, you have a relationship with everything. Yeah. Yeah, right. With everything. Food, alcohol, TV, books, work, people, girlfriend, boyfriend, somebody on the side. Like, it's <laughs> it, it's all, it's, it, you have relationships yeah. with everything. I have a relationship with the studio. I have a relationship with this TV, with the roadcaster, with the yeah. mics. Like, it's... It's all relationships on how you treat that person or that thing. Mm-hmm. You're you want to use it, you don't want to abuse it. Exactly. Yeah, and I think at some point too, you know, I I can only speak from my perspective, right? But um, you know, you want to be able to, at least for me, you know, like this podcast for me, the you know the reason I started this podcast was because I was genuinely like curious about life. About just shit that was going on. And I was just like, why? Like, why is this this way? Like, at least help me understand, you know? Not because I'm here to offend anybody. Um, but at the same time, like, it, you know, if you allow it to, you know, like, let's see the podcast. Like, the people coming in and like, hey, well, your podcast is good or it's, it's not good. Like, they, you know, there's, 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 what am I trying to say here? Like, a persuasion that kind of subconsciously happens from the audience, you know? You know? And you're like... Do these people want to listen to, you know, have more people that are inclusive or do these people want to hear more about some raw shit? Like it's yeah. fucking hard sometimes figuring that out, you know, and that, that's where it got to that point. And honestly, I lost my train of thought. Do you know what I do? What? I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that's fucking good. No, I, that, don't, that, that, I don't. That's, that's I don't. It's just like I, I yeah. say somebody I, I have a conversation with mm-hmm. somebody that I know somebody in the audience doesn't like. Mm-hmm. Tough shit. Yeah. No, I don't care. No, I, I completely get that part because I don't give a fuck either. But it's more about the – what am I trying to say? Or at least how am I trying to explain it? Like in the sense that – um, okay, going back to like the whole numbers, right? Yeah. Like at some point for me, right, you see numbers and you're like, okay, well, the numbers don't necessarily reflect the the attention that I feel like it's getting or the attention that it's not getting. Mm-hmm. Right. When people go on social media or they go on Instagram, which is one of the reasons why Instagram and or met or what do they call meta now? Yeah. Facebook and Instagram, they removed the fucking likes count. So the YouTube was because people there's this like psychological thing that happens with these fucking like symbols, like these Absolutely. thumbs up. Yeah. So, of course, you know, you no matter how where you are, I think at some point you still kind of fall victim to these fucking mind tricks. Uh, and to the point where, like, you see these numbers and you're like, okay, fuck. Like, I need to do something different to kind of, like, boost those numbers up. That's what I'm more referring to. Not mm. like, the, like, hey, I'm going to fucking try to please this. Like, oh, okay. I, don't I see what people think. Saying. So like, you're typically, you're saying the data, the actual uh, analytics. Uh, yes, correct. Okay. That, the f- information. You know, analytics. That's like, yeah, so okay. that's where I'm like, okay, that can be a mind game. Like, if oh, you're looking at it over, all the time, you're like. Fuck, it's not growing. Especially if you're just an overthinker in general. I'm an like, over, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't be able to do that. Like, I, I, I would, mean, I man. wouldn't, I don't sleep, I don't sleep at all as it is. And if I, if, <laughs> if, and if I, if I try to look at that stuff when you know I'm trying to sleep, then mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't be here. I'd, I'd, I'd yeah. be on my laptop just looking at that shit, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. So I mean, that's what kind of relates everything back. So right after this whole fucking mental cleanse that I feel like I've had, it gave me the, you know, to answer your question about like, what do you see to the people who are like, yeah, you took a long break. Well, look, the people who are going to stick around with your project or whatever you do, those are the people who are going to, those are your road dogs, right? Those are the people who are going to be the OGs following through. Everybody else is just going to get weeded out enough to give room to the people who actually give a fuck about your stuff. Mm. So... Mm. You know, if you're still here nine months later and you're tuning in because you're like, oh, fuck, it's Eddie from Social Primate. He's back. He's back. Then you know I'm back. You know, <laughs> yeah. everybody else, again, I don't give a fuck. You're here or you're not, you know. <laughs> but the people who are, those are the people who are your real audience, you know. And those are the people who you not want to cater to, but the people who you want to keep true to, you know. Exactly. Like, because like, those are the fans. That That's the audience that that is there, That that yeah. is there for the brand. That is there for Eddie. That is there for social primates. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. so, you know, if you're, if you see my face now, you're like, what? There we go. Yeah. I'm Out of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> um, psychedelics, dude. Have you ever tried them? I have. I've had really? a few okay. mushroom trips. Um, yeah, mushroom trips for the most part. Okay. Yeah, I, I've, I've had the chance to do acid. 
I like to believe the universe kind of speaks to you in certain ways. I had mm. this acid tab in my pocket that that was just waiting there for like two days. I was like, should I take it? Should I take it? Mm-hmm. And then I don't know where one day I just kind of like randomly lost my wallet, which was where I was hiding it. Okay. And I stuck it as a sign like, okay, it's not my time to, to do acid right now. Gotcha. But this November, I but you have, lo- Wait, you lost it? I you lost, lost your wallet? Lost, lost so there's a wallet out somewhere and an wherever you were with an acid tab in there? <laughs> <laughs> pretty it was in downtown LA, so I'm pretty sure some, somebody found it and yeah, I'm pretty sure it was some like you know, some bum or like some yeah. fucking I don't know. Well you made some bum happy. Hey, in, yeah, in for downtown a few hours. You there you had, go. I'm hoping you had a self realization <laughs> moment, man. <laughs> but uh yeah, that, that happened. But uh, again, yeah, November I I'm planning on going to like this retreat. Okay. Um, to do like ayahuasca. Ooh. So okay. it's like supposed it's supposed to be like this like ceremony ceremony like for men you know so it's like all right cool nice and when are you doing that in november november sometime i think late november that's sweet yeah so i'm kind of i'm not actually kind of nervous like it's, really? been, it's been like two and it's been like three years since i had last since i last had a mushroom trip three years okay yeah i was at joshua tree and that shit was like a beautiful like how was it damn man i was crying i cried yeah. a lot yeah i cried a lot to get a lot Huh? How, how much do you remember? Boy, how many? Uh, it was just uh, it was a full eighth, so it was like what? Oh, okay, like three and a half. Oh, gram. that's an idea. Yeah, that's a fucking ideal dose. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like the, yeah. I guess a standard or something. Yeah, but point is, yeah, I took it and uh, man, I was we, we were there. Fuck, man, we got there like probably like at four in the afternoon. We just set up. It was just me and a couple of random friends, and we're like, dude, let's just go to Joshua Tree. We got a bag of mushrooms. Like, so let's fucking go. And uh, we showed up to Joshua. We set up camp. Dude, it was fun games until, like, we were setting up our our tents and stuff. You know, we were all happy. And they're like, all right, you guys ready to eat the shrooms? We're like, yeah. You know, everybody got their own little uh, mm-hmm. ETH. And, um, you know, everything seems good. And we're all talking like, hey, man, how do you feel? I'm like, dude, I feel great right now. Yeah. You know, the typical, like, hey, it's not hitting me yet. You yeah. Know? And then at some point, I'm just, like, sitting on the bench outside, like, looking at these fucking humongous boulders. And I'm just like. Like, man, like, you, like my ears just felt like they, like, I, just, I can hear the rustling of the plants and the fucking scattering of the fucking lizards or something. And then I started, like, kind of, like, like we, I think it was closer to the sunset at that point by the time it started kicking in. And the fucking sky looked so beautiful. And like, just, you know, orange, red, purple colors. It looked like fucking Bob Ross was painting the sky. <laughs> like, dude, it was beautiful. And I started crying, like, just how, like, nature looked. And I was like, dude, this it's beautiful. Like we live here, and like um, you know, I started having all these other thoughts. Like the, the recurring thing that happens when I'm on mushrooms is um, I get like this sensation of like alone, like being alone, and I hate that feeling because it's like, like you're gonna die alone. And you're like, no, you're not. You know, but like the whole idea is just alone. Like right, like you're born alone. You fucking make your decisions at some point by yourself. Like everything depends on yourself absolutely and then you die and you're like ah oh, fuck you know you're the last person to ever like communicate with yourself in your head like that you know like ah oh, fuck this is it yeah you know whatever happens so like to me it's like man i'm i guess in the subconscious way i'm like afraid to be alone you know and i think and it's a scary feeling man like if you let that you know when you have the mushroom trip it feels good and then you fucking go deep into your fucking thoughts and you're like oh fuck you're just like in fetal position yeah and you're like damn man like you have these these dark moments and eventually you kind of get out of them. You know, you build yourself back up and, you know, it's like the whole ego death. Like you're like one way and then you come back. You're like, oh, dude, and I'm grateful <laughs> to be back, first of all, in my own head. And then, but you're like, dude, I had these reflections. And like, for me, it's been like that whole loneliness thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have lonely issues, people in real life. It's just like, <laughs> it's, it's just my mushroom trip. It's yeah. trying to tell me something here. Yeah. So I've been trying to kind of figure that out too, you know? Well, you can, I mean, anybody can relate to that because that is true. Like, yeah, we, we just have, I just posted something a few weeks ago about, about ourselves and, and about like you, it's just you, like in your head, yeah, it's just you 100% and how you treat yourself is dependent on, well, how you treat others depends on how you treat yourself. The Mind Buzz is powered by Mind Buzz Media. Mind Buzz Media is an on site video and audio podcast production company. Have you ever thought about starting your own video and audio podcast? 
or do you have an existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? Mind Buzz Media brings a professional podcast studio to you. Visit mindbuzz.org for more. Ah, okay. I, I did see that post. Yeah, no, and that's exactly true. I mean, who was I? Oh, I was telling my, I have, I have a son. He's 10 years old. So um, I was kind of trying to t- tell him that last time too. Um, I was like, dude, like, because he has like these people in school he's just dealing with. And yeah. Like, like, man, look, you got to remember like, if, if somebody's not, to not, you have to defend yourself, but you kind of have to try to understand, like, sometimes these people are going through shit too, you know, and like, it's not an excuse to forgive them for being assholes, you know, but it's like, just try to understand like, Hey, like these fucking people are having some, pre- some issues that we don't know of, right. you know, when you can try to like be not a better person, just, but try to be more like, Hey, you know, I mean, it, Again, if you bring your energy to me like that, it's it's up to me to decide whether I'm going to deflect it or just be like, hey, or absorb it. And you're right. like, hey, man, fuck this person, too. It's easy to do that. It's easier to absorb than to fucking like talk Absolutely. and be like, oh, this guy's fucking yeah. tripping out. And then most of the most of the the part of that is our subconscious absorbs, mm-hmm. yeah. even even when we don't want when it to. We don't to. want to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, it's just fucking automatic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's hard to, to filter you like... If there's energy coming at you, you have to know and be uh, aware of how to filter that energy. Yeah. Like, are you going to take, should be taking all the, the good positive vibes and then anything negative coming towards you. But I mean, from you filtering what's good for you and what's bad for you, yeah. ultimately, uh, that's like what you what you feed on. Yeah, and you said that I, that will ultimately m- kind of mold you into the person that you are into other people's eyes. Yeah. You know, not not that that I don't care about that shit yeah. either, but you know, at some point, other people pick up like, hey, this guy's a decent person, you know, or you know, they they just know, you know, like I had somebody last time at work was like, hey, I'm gonna leave this with you, and I was like, what? Well, uh, you sure? And he's like, yeah, you look like somebody I can trust. I was like, okay, I mean, I'm glad that I, I radiate that. <laughs> cool. Uh, but you know it's cool and rather than like hey, yeah. you look like a psycho you know it's, like, yeah. it's better than that <laughs> I, I'm not gonna leave this with you I'm gonna leave it with that guy over there so just don't yeah don't yeah, yeah stay yeah, keep, your, <laughs> keep your distance but um, no you know that's this is the kind of stuff that you know at least for me you know I can be talking about this but I'm a victim to a lot of these things like yeah. you know I, I up, just today you know just had like this argument earlier and I was just like instead of taking a moment to just breathe i went there and fucking typed in capitals like ah! and then i yeah. looked back at it and i was like god damn it like you know that's probably for sure not the appropriate way to respond yeah. like i could have responded later uh, and taking the time to like take a breath you know? and, I'll, and i'll tell you that and what i always say and is that sometimes we react to certain things and we re we we yeah. respond to certain things. Yeah. When we react to th- certain things, it, we're reacting. We're not responding like w- we should. So like what you did with the capitals. capital capitals and fucking all the fucks and shits and bullshits and stuff, <laughs> that, that was a reaction from you. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and it's, again, something that you look back afterwards and you're like, ugh. Like, yeah. You know, you, you like, the, for example, I say this in the podcast, like, hey, Eddie is a righteous guy. Yeah. But then I'm doing fucking capitals. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, he's not. You know, it's like, no, there's a yeah. fine line between this stuff. You know, you could be aware, but at the same time, it's something you kind of have to keep chipping away at all times. Yeah. You know, it's like something that psychedelics remind me of is like, like I've done the uh, isolation tank as well. Oh, sweet. Dude, I still got to do one of those. Yeah, I haven't done it. it. You should definitely do it. Yeah. Man. It feels, it feels more like a subtle mushroom trip, but it's still very like, do you take edibles and do it? I took edibles, yeah. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I, right. I, I, I got to take Fucking stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was stoned. I do that. But it's a, it's a great experience, too, because, um, and again, I at that point, I'm jumping from place to place, but just to kind of. It's what we do. It's all <laughs> good. It's what we do here. Info, info on that trip. Um, I went in there, you know, two hours. All you're doing is just laying down in water in a big ass fridge. And it's just dark and your body's just floating. And it's kind of hard to get used to it for a while until at some point you kind of like, I don't know, you can't, I don't even, I don't remember if I had my eyes closed or open because it's so dark, you can't even tell. But you, all you know is you kind of just feel like you're kind of floating. And then like your mind just does its thing. It's just like, it's like you're dreaming, but awake in, in a wake state. Okay. Kind of, you know, like these fucking, 
you're just dreaming, you know? Yeah. And you have like these certain things happening. And again, to me, it was just like the whole like, oh, I'm just floating in darkness alone. Yeah. You know, that's like, it's like the void. Nobody, at least I don't want that. I don't want, I don't want there to just be a fucking void of darkness. It's not, it's not as fun, you know? Yeah. Not that it's scary. It's just like, man, I'm just going to be floating. Like, well, yeah. you throw me into a fucking dog or, like, like <laughs> make me a frog or something, you know? Like, I don't give a fuck, but yeah. let me continue experiencing life through other, you know, fucking mediums or something. But mm-hmm. not in the dark, in the void, or shit. Dropping mm-hmm. your light here. Too many hand movements. Um, but, um, yeah, dude, you know, that's what I want, you know? Yeah. That's the experience I would hope for. So, like, to think that I'll just be floating in an abyss and, like, it just ends in darkness is boring. What did you think after, what did you think of death after your mushroom trip? I believe in like, for sure. I believe in afterlife, man. Yeah, like, I believe in afterlife. Like, I that's why like the whole like man throw me to some other creature or something. That's, I highly believe that. Like, it's just one thing that I do remember clearly from uh, my first mushroom trip was that when I was moving around, everything was like just photos. Like, you know when you fucking see old cartoons how they used to make yeah. they're just frames. Like, life felt like I, my eyes were just shutters, and it was just the fact that my eyes were, like, capturing light so fast that everything looked seamless. And I was like, this is just the Matrix. <laughs> Dude. But if, it, and that, and then I started, like, yeah. I can close my eyes, and people around me will walk, and I would just feel their fucking, you know how, like, bats are reading sonar? Yeah. Um, Like, I have my eyes closed, and I just feel people's, like, fucking body vibrations, like, kind of joining into Isn't that weird shit. how that happens? It's trippy. It's like, weird. It's, it's super weird. Did you listen to music at all when you're on that? Yeah, I did. I listened to some, um, what are they called? It's like this Peruvian music. Um, damn it, oh, I forgot so, what they're called. So you had some like, some like bongos and shit <laughs> fucking playing and trumpets and Kinda, stuff, right? There's, what are they called? They play those type of musics or music, a lot of those songs in uh, ayahuasca rituals. They're called... Can we can we search that? Just put like yeah. uh ayahuasca ayahuasca music or something. Ayahuasca music, yeah. All right. I'm gonna be listening to this on my way to work now. Ayahuasca. Hey, what are you listening to? Oh, just ayahuasca music. It's, it's so peaceful. Oh, dude. what is that? Um, ayahuasca. It's a y no wait a yeah are you yeah oh yeah a y you oh there it is. Oh, a- ayahuasca. There and we then, go. Uh, ayahuasca, YouTube. And then put y- music. What are these songs called, man? But the po- point of these songs is that they're like they're like flute songs, like, you know, chanting. Um, Pachamama. So, like, let's say... Oh, yes, this would be probably a good example. Yeah, it's very, like, nature. Oh, shit. Watch, when they, once they start chanting... Oh, they call it Icaros. There you go. Peru, Amazon, Ayahuasca, Shamanic songs. Icaro? Yeah, they call it Icaro. Icaro is a South African indigenous colloquialism? Colloquialism, yeah. Col- colloquialism for magic songs. Oh, okay. Yeah, so basically while you're tripping, they'll play this music, right? At least in my mushroom trip, we were just in the living room and we're listening to this. Yeah, and I was just like, "Shit!" On magic mushrooms. On oh, magic mushrooms. Okay, and like I could vibe I don't to know this. if you mind like skipping a. Oh, well, I should let it build, I guess. But then they started to. They started fucking getting deep into your soul. Yeah. This is Peru Am- Amazon Ayahuasca Shamanic Songs. If you're just tuning in. So these are supposed to, like, the idea behind them, mm-hmm. they're supposed to kind of calm you and uh, help guide you through, like, good spirits into oh, your okay. fucking or your, your trip. Because, you know, sometimes you have, like, again, those negative thoughts and stuff. But 
there's one thing they learned is that shrooms shows you, you know, you go there with intentions, but shrooms ultimately kind of shows you what you need to see and not mm-hmm. what you want to see, you know, or shows you what you, yeah, what you need to see, not what you want to see. Ah, you know, okay. So it kind of forces you to be like, hey, there's these issues inside of you that you need to address, you know, like you need to fucking find a way to better this or stop this or something. That's why a lot of the people, I'm oh, sorry, I think California recently started testing uh, like uh, psychedelics for mental health. Like, cause it, Oh yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, you know, for the same reason. Absolutely, it's a big one. It kind of makes you self-reflect into your own things. And like you said, the only person that you, and I could tell my kid, like the only person that you can control is yourself. Absolutely. Like that's the only per- person that you can really come back to at the end of the day and be like, hey man, like, yeah. We did good or we don't, you know, or we did it. And that's all you can really have control over. So I feel like psychedelics, you know, even before like this whole California movement, I was like for like the idea that people should have the ability to go through these experiences for self-growth, you know? And, you know, it's cool to have your shrooms just for, to fuck around, you know? But you're still going to go through that trip. If you take enough, yeah, you're going to go through a trip. Absolutely. It's going to show you some stuff, you know? Yeah. I think that's one thing that, um, I think who asked me, I think it was Crick. Chris from Kickback, he asked me, um, or we we're just talking, we we're just on the subject in general, mm-hmm. and because um, typically I just take take these substances w- with intention. I've never really yeah. taken them and you know gone to a concert or taken them and and um, did any recreational type of activities yeah. while on them. If the, They've always been like something that I would take that I would think about for a couple of days mm-hmm. with intention, take them, and then that um that period that afterglow period, you know after taking them having a reflection on the actual psychedelic trip but um yeah, it's been a while for me i mean i haven't it, it's been a while I mean I think yeah. my time is up that I should have another one, but the last experience was just. It, it was it was a good experience that I, I felt maybe like uh you know I'm good I'm how long, content. How long has it been? Probably on about I want to say like a about two years. Ah okay yeah it sounds like about the time from where you're like like maybe I could start two years I want to say yeah and then uh, there was a period that I was uh, microdosing for for a couple of weeks. Oh nice I yeah. I tried that but I forgot to keep doing it and I just stopped yeah. doing it. Yeah there there's yeah there's certain regimens that yeah. you that you. They use these substances for, yeah, so. that, yeah. That's why with the the whole ayahuasca one, I, I, that one I'm that's cool. sure nervous about. You know, yeah, like, fuck, I don't know what I'm gonna. You know, it's gonna be it's supposed to be a lot stronger than fucking mushrooms. So. Yeah, well, it's dimethyltryptamine. Oof. It's DMT, dude, oh, and it's uh, brewed. Yeah, I'm scared, man. I'm low key scared it's of a brew. doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man, it's gonna be in the Mojave Desert, so we're gonna, you know, it's gonna be done. But they, they were telling me, yeah, uh, she was like, because it's a yeah, her and her, like, what is it called? Curandera, or like the shaman. It's a, mm-hmm. it's her grandma, and they're gonna have just really. Like, oh, that's yeah. that's cool. Yeah, it's cool because they have women sessions, they have men sessions, and they have like both sessions. But it's supposed to be like just like this, like he, like a healing her circle type of deal, you know. I'm just like, you know what? Like, I'm down to just, you know, just do it. You know? How'd you get in contact with that? You just found just uh, know people that. No, she. I actually had her on the podcast like a couple years oh, really? ago. Yeah, she. Okay. Her name's Heidi. So shout out to Heidi. But um, yeah, she's cool as fuck, and uh, yeah, she's she's just been going through like this whole journey herself. That mm-hmm. you know, it's been it's been crazy to see. And at this point, she's been into she started getting into like the whole shaman stuff and like ayahuasca rituals. Uh, and you know, like anybody who's done it, like they swear that it's something that they feel like more people should kind of have access to. Uh, and I saw it as an opportunity. And like, again, it's been a few years since I did the mushrooms. I've been kind of, you know, look, not looking to get some, not the FBI listening. <laughs> but um, I've been looking to. My FBI, some. the FBI agent listening to this podcast right now is <laughs> saying, like, okay, fuck. he's writing shit down right now. He's taking, <laughs> taking some notes. notes. Yeah. Um, I mean, I already talked too much about that thing, but so what? <laughs> Trying to stop us. We're going to be tripping out. <laughs> We're still going to be on the trip. <laughs> but um, yeah, they told me that like, you know, so like two weeks or so or a week or two before, like they suggest, you know, to not drink any alcohol. Don't so smoke. two weeks, two weeks before? Yeah, two weeks before the event. Or oh, okay. The so the, the full, so the full two weeks, no alcohol. Yeah, no drugs. Leading up to, okay. 
uh, you have to uh, just drink water and no sugar or anything. So uh, kind of like just cleanse yourself. Cleanse yourself. Yeah. No sex. No no porn. For two weeks. For two weeks. For two weeks. That's a. That's that... gonna be the hard one. <laughs> nah, okay. Just kidding, guys. <laughs> okay. Um. But no, for reals. Yeah. If, if anything, that it's gonna be. I, I smoke a lot of weed, man. So. Oh yeah. That's gonna be the one. Like, oh, god damn it. But okay. it's for a good cause, so I keep telling myself, like, okay, like, you gotta do it. But yeah, it's the whole like kind of weaning yourself off of that kind of stuff be prior to it, um, so you can just have like a more natural, like, you know, experience. Yeah, or clean experience, you know. Yeah. What was the last time you took a break from cannabis? Um, probably. I mean, I recently switched a couple. I think early this year, I stopped. I still smoke flour now and then, but mm-hmm. um, I don't smoke flour anymore. Mm. Nowadays, it's just kind of like either edibles or, I don't know, the little, like, juice, CBD or mm, okay. CBD, H, uh, THC yeah. drinks. All right, you're, or, like, a, you know, the Stizzy, the fucking yeah. little vape pen. Dude, Alien Labs, mm-hmm. they have a great uh, vaporizer. Alien Labs, it's a, it's a brand. Yeah. They have a what vaporizer? It's a no. It's it's uh it's like a it's like a stizzy. What? Yeah. Wait, isn't Alien Labs the one? Uh, they're like um, they're big here around here, no? Like in LA or something. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I know who you're talking about. Then the yeah, pull pull that up because uh, they're these things are fucking sweet. Like I'm on my second uh, I'm on my second one and mm. super good high. Oh yeah. Yeah, super super good high. Alien Labs vapes. Yeah, yeah, they're they're um. There we go. You're right there. So select that one. Yeah, Is super that a nug. Oh, that nug looks good though. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Ah, cool. uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Good product, dude. Sure. Yeah, this one, good product. Uh, let's see if the one that I have, GMO, Crypto Chronic. Know that one. You like that one, huh? Crypto chronic. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh GMO. Uh anyways, but no, that that one's a good yeah. good product. No affiliation. I mean they're not sponsoring, but I wouldn't be opposed uh <laughs> to any sponsorship. Hit, Hit them up. Um but yeah, super super good stuff. Uh what else is a good one? Um they're like they taste like Starburst. They're so fucking Ooh. good. No, they taste like now and laters. Damn, okay. Yeah. Like the hard candy ones, right? Wait, were those the hard candies? I think they had a version. Lost Farms. Can we look up Lost Farms too? Yeah, please. Lost Farms. <laughs> those things are good too. Yeah, I've been looking to, to switch a different brand, man, because it's been doing it, but it hasn't been doing it. Yeah. I use one. You, you, I tried some other one called Select, I think. Like some of my, one of my friends had it. And there we go. Stuff. Kiva Confections. And they're fucking good. Ah, uh, okay. They're delicious. Yeah, Kiva, yeah. Yes, I think we're 21. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, man, it's like some really cool branding, too. Yeah. Yeah, awesome stuff. Yeah. That's what drew me in, their their branding. Yeah. Alien Farms and then these guys. Yeah, that's big really good too. stuff. Yeah, if, it, if the packaging looks good, I'm probably going to lean to it. So Made that. with um, live resin. It, it's, it's just fucking delicious. And then on top of that, like the yeah. good, steady, a good, steady experience. But they're also fucking delicious, dude. Oh, uh, nice. That's always a win. That's always a win. Because you can, you know, sometimes you smoke something, you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, God. Or, or, you, or you you taste one. Like, uh, we had a, uh, it was like a 100 milligram one, dude. And that thing tasted straight like fucking chemicals. <laughs> like we, oh, that really? is tasted straight like fucking like, cle- like bleach or something. Dude. Like cleaner, it was weird. Like it was yeah. like straight ass chemicals. Dude, I remember this time I w- I went to this shop and I bought. It was just one of those, you know, you know, before the whole legalization here in California, there was just a bunch of weed shops everywhere. Yeah, uh, and I went to some shady one that had just opened. Bought some weed, smoked it. I don't know what the fuck was in that <laughs> weed, man. But I started like getting like rashes on my neck. What? Yeah, and I was like, what the hell? I thought I was finally, or had I had finally become allergic to weed, and I was like, no. <laughs> But no, it was just like, apparently, I guess it was just some bad weed or something. Is there people, you? there's people that are allergic to weed? Can we look that up? Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was like, no. I was like, I'll have can, to find can, out. Can you be allergic to marijuana? That's what I want to know. 
That that suck. Because I know there's people that already have like certain amount of uh, cannabinoid uh, cannabinoids yeah, in, their in their body, body. already. And when they get, uh, when they try to get high, they don't get high. They they just like they can't get high. Yeah, I heard that too. That kind of sucks. Or or if they ha- already have too many uh, cannabinoids, that uh, when they do get high, they just get like extremely fucking blasted, <laughs> and they can't even enjoy themselves. That sucks. Yeah, that either way sucks for sure. Let's see what it says. The symptoms of marijuana allergy include many clinical manifestations depending on how a person person was exposed. Contact or touching the plant can result in breaking out in rashes, hives, or swellings called uh can you get this one? What is that? Angio Angiodema? Angiodema. Breathing or inhaling marijuana allergens can result in nasal or ocular or eye allergy symptoms. Oh, yeah. So you so can. It does, it does exist. Oh my god, I'm glad I did not become allergic. But basically that's kind of what happened. The like the rashes? Yeah. Oh, go to what is that? To, uh, go to marijuana allergy is no laughing matter. <laughs> that's the third one. Yeah, right there. Damn. Scroll on. the headline, man. Yeah. The legal signs Okay, signs you're allergic to weed include nasal congestion, eye inflammation, coughing, wheezing, and sneezing. But hold on. Mm. Because if you're stoned, you're you cannot, it, it, your eyes are red, so you don't know if you, it's an <laughs> eye inflammation. If, you're, if you don't smoke at all and you can cough, you could wheeze. So how would you distinguish the fact that if you're allergic to weed versus you're really high (laughs) (laughs) they need to edit this article i think maybe they have a point with the nasal congestion and maybe with the sneezing but everything else just sounds like you're just high yeah and you're just blasted out of your mind the person that wrote this article is probably high when they wrote it (laughs) i bet and they were probably sick i bet you anything yeah so like I'm allergic. I'm allergic to uh, to weed. I'm just gonna make a fucking bo- bogus <laughs> article about this stuff. But uh, oh, I mean, see, there that, it that's is. the other part too. It says another allergen associated with marijuana mold. I think that's the one I had heard. That what if the weed if they grow the wrong, of, or sorry if they don't clean the weed right, it can potentially grow mold, which is gonna when you smoke it, it's gonna cause some sort of like reaction in you. Yeah. So that's what I kind of assume was the issue. Like, Oh, Fuck mold? These guys didn't take care of their weed? Moldy ass weed? Moldy weed. So I never went back to those like ratchet ass like shops. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what happens. And now I just go to like prepackaged places, you know? Yeah. It sucks because they kind of, you know, wait, whatever. That's a whole different point. But the point is, is that I'd rather just go with that weed now. Yeah. The ta- yeah. And then the taxes are fucking high on. Yeah, on. It's, it's, <laughs> like they're high. Like literally, they're, they're just like <laughs> on the products. Um, especially like when, uh, like when, um, they, didn't they like, there was like the certain law that got passed, like within the past three years mm-hmm. about, uh, about like the taxation on certain companies that were delivering. That's why there was like oh, such a yeah. large, there was such a large, um, um, I don't know, like a large taxation on um like on a lot of companies, like DoorDash and Uber kind of thing. Or like no, 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 with, with uh, dispensaries. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, like if they have their license, um, I don't, I try, I'm trying to think of something that we can Google search about this, but mm-hmm. um, like it was, I guess there was the two comp, like if you're, like if you had all these weed delivery companies, or if just a weed company in general uh-huh. there was this certain law that got passed to where um they would have to pay like a certain amount of tax to stay in business that's why a lot of mom and pop uh pot shops kind of like dwindled down and they weren't mm-hmm. able to be like on weed maps or or anything like that because yeah. they had to have like some certain uh tax that they had to pay to stay in business that's why a lot of like these bigger companies stayed in business because they had the, the funds. They had the, the the capital to yeah. actually pay for the taxes. Uh, okay, that makes sense, and that's fucked up. Weed monopoly <laughs> is what happened. Yeah, B- yeah. I mean, basically, that is that is true. 
that's why now like you know it's really really rare if you see a spot that's open like that every now and then i'll stop by and be like yeah, let me check out the <laughs> Hey. So does it have good stuff, man? Y'all don't have mold, right? You got to check. <laughs> hey, you got mold? No. You got to go bring a fucking mold detector. Yeah. Stick it in there. Mold detector. Hours. But no, yeah. no it's, it's, uh, it's been a cool psychedelic time, man. I'm, I'm just, again, going back to the whole ayahuasca real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm scared, but I'm ready. I think it's just to kind of have it. I hope I continue to stay sane. But um, yeah, I think it should be, be interesting. Yeah. The reason why I asked you when, like, how your break was... Um, did you notice any sleep changes after you stopped? Um, like in terms of just general, like general sleep, sleep. uh, kind of, if anything, maybe I've gotten like better sleep, but I said recently my schedule did kind of like just take Mm -hmm. a drastic change. No, I'm saying like, um, so Uh say you went like two weeks, um, on cannabis, mm-hmm. and then you stopped. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like yeah. from the time that you stopped to when you started using cannabis again, mm-hmm. was there any kind of change with your sleeping patterns, dreams, anything like that? Um, no, not really. No, oh, I think my dreams kind of just stay the same. It's interesting. Yeah, like I, it, I mean, but it's also because I. I although I did cut down on like the flower, mm-hmm. I still kind of do stay high, like. <laughs> so there's no break. <laughs> so there's no so break. There, there's no it's break. Just the quantities is lower. My oh. tolerance, my tolerance has been minimized drastically. <laughs> but yes, to answer everybody's question, <laughs> I stay high. Fucking Snoop Dogg. <laughs> the no. Mexican one. <laughs> okay, no, because I was asking, uh, like, the, okay, never mind then. <laughs> I okay, like, uh, I will tell you from oh, yeah. my experience. So, and what I've learned, I learned, I, I had to look this up the other day. Um, so there's something in the cannabis Mm -hmm. that does something during our REM sleep, Mm -hmm. which, uh, there's, I think, can we look up the seven stages of, of sleep or something like that? So in during REM sleep is when we, is your deepest sleep that you have. Mm -hmm. So cannabis doesn't allow us to go through REM sleep. So that's why when we wake up from like a night of of cannabis, we're tired because in the stage of REM sleep, we're we're sleeping, mm. we're yeah. we're we're having that deep sleep, and we dream in REM sleep. When I take a break, I fucking I I dream so much, and the dreams are fucking vivid. When you take a break, when you take a break, mm-hmm. because when you're on cannabis. It doesn't allow it doesn't allow your brain to to enter in REM sleep. Mm-hmm. That's why, like okay. after a night of cannabis, you're you're you you feel tired. Of course, that groggy mental cloudness mm-hmm. that you usually feel like after a night of 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 smoking is yeah. because because REM sleep because the sleeping patterns get all jacked up. Okay, it's, what do we got? Oh, let's see. Um, cellular development, scroll down. What is that dopamine? Um, no, this is not what I was looking for. Um, what'd you search? Four, is it four stages? There we go. Um, there we go. All right, there, awake, light, deep, and REM sleep. Oh, there we go. There we go. So it's one, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sleep has been traditionally divided into four categories: awake, light sleep, deep sleep, and REM sleep. Uh, click on REM sleep, or actually, you know what? Pick, click on that um that little picture over there. Yeah. Okay. Can we zoom into that? <laughs> Stupid cool. They did that. They they started doing that on purpose. Bitches like making it small so you can go into the website like, right. to generate traffic. Yeah, is yeah. that why they did that? Yeah, that's why they did that. Fuckers. Okay, um, yeah, just zoom into that because I want to read the stage. Click on it. There we go. Okay, uh, what is that? Uh, NREM. Stage one, transition period between 
wakefulness and sleep lasts around five to ten minutes. Stage two, body temperature drops and heart rate begins to slow. Brain begins to produce sleep spindles. Lasts approximately 20 minutes. Stage three, muscle relax, blood pressure and breathing rate drop. Deepest sleep occurs in three. So REM sleep, brain becomes more active, body becomes relaxed, and immobilized dreams occur. There we go. Eyes move rapidly. Um, but yeah, there's, and then let's search, um, let's Google cannabis and REM sleep. Y- you Make another tab, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. like, the video that I seen, dude, it it doesn't, like, cannabis does not allow for REM sleep. So you only get to stage one, two, and three, and then from three it doesn't allow you. Mm. Short-term cannabis use appears to increase the time you spend in deep sleep, the stage that helps you wake up feeling refreshed. However, THC decreases the amount of time you spend in rapid eye movement REM sleep. When you spend more time dreaming, processing emotions, and cementing new memories. Wow. I feel betrayed right now. Yeah. The weed has betrayed me. Yeah. But yeah. You know what? Nah, I'm kidding. I'm saying, go <laughs> nah, I mean, look, to be honest, I, t- there was a point. I mean, even now, I, st- I still have crazy. I mean, maybe it's yeah. good because I, I stopped smoking flour, but, you know, I, I still get some funky ass dreams, man. Yeah. Yesterday I had some weird ass dreams. Do you remember any? I, I remember the one from yesterday clearly for sure. Like, do you want to share? I, I do actually. It's okay. pretty funny. There's this, uh, this is tick. I think, yeah, I don't think he's a TikTok. He's an Instagram guy. He's like this, uh, black dude. He, he like does these skits where like something obvious happens in the video and then he's just like, Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, like, I yeah. forgot his name. Point is I had him. He was in my dream yesterday. So <laughs> if, if he, if he hears this and he's like, Hey, wait a second, that guy was in my dream. Yeah. We had some collective connection there, but point is he was in my dream yesterday and I was just chasing him because he had, apparently had killed somebody. Whoa. And I was having like these thriller like style type of dream. Mm-hmm. And I was like running this whole time. I woke up sweaty, like, Oh God, man, I'm tired. And uh, I went back to sleep and caught him and woke yeah. up and I was like, I felt good. I feel like I accomplished something in my dream state. You got him. Why do you think you had that? I think I've been watching a lot of scary movies, a lot of like mm. thrillers. Thrillers. Uh, so it's the thrillers and the TikTok videos that they merge. kind of like <laughs> merge in your brain when you're sleeping. Yep. And I was yeah. like, what the fuck? My last dream, dude, was weird. Um, I was, I think it was like a hall, like a, like a Capitol building. Like uh-huh. I was meeting somewhere. And I told everybody that, hey, I'm going to go use the restroom. So I went to use the restroom in a stall. Um, the restroom looked like a big locker room. People were mm. like changing and stuff. And I went. And uh, I went to one of the stalls, taking a piss, and uh, like finished. And then I turned around and there was like this weird, like skinny, like lady like mm-hmm. just skinny woman standing in front of me she had like a shirt on the top and she had uh, she was bottomless so mm-hmm. there's no underwear no pants no shorts no skirts any, nothing like that and she was bleeding uh-huh. she was bleeding from her vagina right like clearly it was mm-hmm. like there was there was blood and i was just like um this is fucking weird at first i was like uh you're in the men's Locker room, restroom. <laughs> Please get out of here. And she was just looking at me. She was like with like a like a mean face, right? And then um, she um, she like started like she got the blood, dude, from her vagina, and she started f- she like flicked it at me. Wow! Like she cupped it. She cupped the blood, yeah. and she started like fucking throwing it at me, dude. She was like fucking. Throwing her blood at me, I I was feeling like the drops on my face. They're going down. I was just like, Ugh. like, what are you doing? Don't do that. And they kept on. And I was wearing like a white Dodger jersey too. And I was like, dude, you fucked up my Dodger jersey. What the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah. And then after she did that, she like ran away. And then I went outside and I told the security, I was like, hey, like, there's this fucking lady just throwing vagina blood at people yeah. in the locker room, dude. You got to go catch her. And I told them that, and I don't know, like, yeah, some time passed in the dream, and <laughs> and they're like, yeah, okay, we caught her, and I was like, okay, and then that was it. It was weird. I don't know how Random. to interpret that. I mean... There's some things that happen in dreams that you're just like, 
Okay, do you how do you... them after you have them? Yeah, I do. I, I, I have a journal. I have like a little notepad in my phone. Mm-hmm. Um, when I do uh, remember stuff or remember dreams, I, um, I write them down. Nice. That's really yeah. Good. And I go back and, and try to at least. Um, we were just actually having this conversation today. Um, I, I have a lot of like moments of deja vu. Mm-hmm. And usually they're something like I have dreams, right? So the dreams come first. I either dream of like past experiences or I experience something in the dream that I've never experienced before. Mm-hmm. My deja vu moments happen and it's from my dream. Mm, okay. You're like like little segments of it. Yes. Yeah, that's. That's always fascinating me because that happens often to me too. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah. I, I, I kind of, you know, the deja vu feeling. Yeah. I, some, I remember sometimes um, somebody told me that, like, oh, I read that when you deja vu, it's like <laughs> this way of like saying that you're on the right path. There you so, go. I've, I've, I've heard that too. And I was like, okay, I'll take it. I'll, yeah. I'll fucking take it. What do you think it is? Do you think it's somebody living on the right path or is it maybe it's just a phenomenon that happens in our human life what do you think fuck to kind of just insert for my my answer to that like when i was a little kid i had this dream where um 9-11 you know like i I was fucking like 10 11 years old so the night before 9-11 happened i had this dream that um like we were getting attacked like in my house I, i live like in the city of bell so I had a dream that I got up and the sky was red. It was like the buildings were burning. And like, there was like, it looked like, you know, Middle Eastern people kind of like going in there shooting my neighbor. And my neighbor was like, hey, corre, corre, run. Whoa. And then he got shot in the head. Bah. And then my dream, oh. I was just scared, dude. I was frightened. And then, um, you know, a few hours later, I wake up. I got to get ready for school. Turn on the TV and every channel. I'm like looking for cartoons. Every channel is just fucking 9-11. And I'm just like, dude, what the fuck? And I realized, like, oh, my God, like, I kind of, what is it, a premonition? Like, mm-hmm. you know, I was like, what the fuck? I dreamt about this. Like, how is it possible that this is, like, kind of real life? So, like, I've had other instances, too. Where so, like, like, the so it was the morning before 9-11? The, no, no, the the night of before 9-11, yeah. yeah the night, like, okay. Yeah. The night of, okay. Yeah, because that happened in the morning or something. Mm-hmm. Like here, it was, like, 9 or 11. Or how or specific was it? Well, we were getting attacked by like Middle Eastern people. They were oh, like okay. in their robes and their like, you know, the beards, mm-hmm. their AKs. They're just like running, bah, shooting my neighbor. I was like, bro, <laughs> you shot my fucking neighbor. I was scared, man. I had to hide underneath like something. The people were helping me hide. Yeah. So the dream was just war. It was just like a war, okay. war dream. But, um, you know, I even specifically remember seeing the buildings burning. I don't know what the buildings were in my dream. But oh, I okay. Saw they were just burning. Hmm. And then that's when in the morning I wake up and I see that the fucking buildings got hit by an airplane you know, i'm too young to understand what even happened but i'm just like yeah dude what the fuck it's just a trip that 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 had happened but to answer your whole dream stuff like i don't know i feel you know how i mentioned earlier like to me like the whole void sounds kind of boring like yeah. th- there's a part of me that also kind of makes me feel that uh, to an extent we live this like the same life until we kind of fucking learn our message right? kind of like the the um like a buddhism type of like a buddha way yeah. to to interpret yeah life. you know like you you get to like like you re- you you're you're living life consistently like you you're born you're like what the fuck is this you die and if you haven't reached that certain enlightenment yet, you do it Start all over, over again. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like Groundhog Day, Groundhog Day with okay. fucking that one guy. I forgot his name. Bill Murray. Kind of like that, you know, like to an extent, you know, you're not physically aware, for, aware of it or mentally aware of it because you kind of start as a new slate. But something tells me that to some part of us, you just kind of, that's what we have to deja vu, like. Wait, what? Like, mm. okay, I'm on the right path, you know? And then I feel like, you know, in a weird way, if you keep trying to continue to those moments where you feel like you're on that path, eventually, in a sense, you'll get to the point where you're like, fuck, I'm ready to move to the next plane, you know? Like, now, yeah, I'm going to move forward, you know? I- oh, wait, sorry, go for it. No, go for it. 
Oh yeah, and then the other part would be like, okay, if this person did kind of move, my, another part of me tells mm-hmm. me like, okay, if that's not the solution or the answer to this, like maybe you just wake up in another fucking dream world and you're just like, bloop, just drop back in and this was a whole dream, you know, like mm-hmm. you were a podcast host in this dream, gotcha. but you're somewhere, you're fucking, you know, Arctic, exp- you know, expedition explorer or something. Yeah. You just kind of like switches. Um, or you're a bum in downtown LA finding a wallet and there's an acid tab in there. You don't, I mean, you you, you don't know it. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, right? Like, yeah. you are me in another life, right. Say, right? That's what they say. Like, you know, like I'm you in, you know, another life, yeah. whatever. Um, but just to kind of ask you something, like, have you ever been stabbed in a dream? Stabbed? Or shot? I, I've been stabbed and I've been shot. I, the last time I remember I was shot. Was, I was like blasted with like a shotgun, Dude, what the fuck? with a fucking shotgun, and this is when I worked at like a, a retail store, mm-hmm. and I was just stocking stuff, you know, um, making sure the aisle looked all clean on my different aisles. I was stocking uh, some stuff, and there was this guy that came out with a big ass shotgun. He was just fucking blasting fools left and right, Damn, and then uh, like he pointed the barrel at me, and I just looked at it and poof, shot me in my stomach, okay. found the floor. Now, do you remember how that felt? Like, do you remember the sensations of? It was definitely like it burned. Okay, yeah, right. You see, yeah. that's what that's what fucking trips me out. Like, I've had moments where I've been stabbed in the stomach mm-hmm. or been shot in the, in the gut, mm-hmm. and like it just feels like this in the dream. It feels like this pressure, like oh fuck, feels hot, kind of burns. Yeah, and it kind of gets a little cold, and you kind of like feel tired, <laughs> kind of fade away, and you die in your dream, right? Yeah, and that to me kind of feels like what I think. A little taste of the moment where we fade goes, where it just feels like, oh, fuck, you're too tired to even open. You shut down. Yeah. And then, boom, I wake up in my real life and I'm just like, what the fuck? I got shot in my fucking dream. Yeah. You know, but that's, I don't know. I like to really think about those things. Like, how, like is that how it feels like at the end when you're like in your bed ready to die? You're like, oh, okay. That the fucking sleep just come over me or the, the weight of the, you know, I don't know if you've ever been so tired where your eyelids can stay open, but it's kind of like that. Like you don't want to go, but it's just your time to like shut down, you know, like yeah. just fade into the, the, to the fucking whatever it is. But that has happened to me a lot of times when I, sometimes when I'm trying to like take a nap, like, uh, I don't know if this ever has happened to you, but you try to close your eyes and you're not kind of ready for the nap yet, but it feels like it's kind of like sucking you in. Like, mm, and you're like, yeah. no, like, I don't want to go to sleep yet. Oh, yeah. And so, like, I feel like that's kind of like, again, like a little taste of what it feels kind of like just like pulled, you're being pulled away from your fucking reality. You know, it's like, it's yeah, weird. there's definitely like, I feel like there's, there's parallels from near death experiences and a psychedelic experiences and mm-hmm. ego death. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I definitely agree with that. Like, it's, it's strange. Like the last time, well, the first time I experienced, uh, that, uh, ego death was just this weird sensation. And I had this thought, like right after that happened, I'm like, this is how, this is what it feels like to die. Mm -hmm. Like I absolutely knew that this is how somebody uh, this is the feeling when somebody dies. It was so fucking scary, but yet it was so, it was so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just dri- drifting away. Mm-hmm. It was weird because I was drifting away, but also I was drifting to something that I have no fucking clue about. Mm-hmm. I was sad because I was leaving, but I was also happy because it was a, like the excitement, the excitement it, yeah. in it. And I was just like, this is, this is, a, I felt happy. I felt sad. It was, mm-hmm all the different type of human emotions that we've ever felt, but all at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I I know what you're talking about. It's just like this, to me, I I can describe like this swelling, like, like, Oh, like just so many things happening. I Mm -hmm. was like, Oh my God. Like, like, yeah, dude. And I was just like moving. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a trip, man. That's why I'm scared. That's why I'm scared about the ayahuasca stuff. Cause uh, it's going to be more powerful. Like, you know, all I can go based off is just people's experiences and how to kind of like maneuver around it. But why do you scared? Like, what's the word behind scared? What What's the scary part of it? I guess to kind of like touch base on like the last two where I had like this feeling of loneliness. I felt like at some point. How do I say it? Like, I guess I wasn't comfortable being by myself. 
You know, and I had to work at that. Like, I felt like I always had to be around people in order to feel like I was needed or something or like, you know, just around people. Right. But I felt at some point I was like, you know what? I have to be, get comfortable with the idea of doing things by myself. Like, mm. uh, yeah. be more independent with things, you know, like, I don't know. It was just for me, it felt like what I needed in my life. Right. In order for me to grow. So, um, if I was to have that trip again and for me to be faced back with the same issue that I've been having in the last two trips or three trips, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I okay. made any progress. Gotcha. And that's what I'm afraid of. Like, fuck. Mm. I, like, what, what have I been doing these last few years that I haven't felt like I've really tackled that issue inside? Gotcha. Of, you know, they call it the integration period. That's what I, I was trying to think of it. So mm. your intentions before you go into, um, you know, this experience you have the experience and then from whatever you learned from your experience there is a period of how you integrate that psychedelic yeah. you know experience yeah, into, into your, your daily life into your daily life yeah yeah i feel like for the most part i'm i'm pretty good about that unless you know outside of the times that i slip up but i feel like i'm pretty good at catching myself be like hey like chill yeah. out you know, yeah like but fucking step back the good thing about that is that this is our life yeah. Like we can, there's, there's moments where we can, we can change and that's the beauty of it, dude. Mm -hmm. We can change our thoughts. We can change our perceptions. We can change the way we in relate to people that we could, that's the beauty of it that it's just, it, it's, I'm just struck in awe sometimes is yeah. we go through like, even me, dude, I, I, I have moments of like, negative thoughts and and depression but those are my thoughts i'm able like i i get to change the way i think about certain things and that's exactly. that's sometimes what we don't fuck i i forget i don't know i'm not gonna throw that on anybody else but i'm just saying that from like my personal yeah. experiences i'm able to to change that from day to day yeah. from minute to minute from hour to hour i can fucking change that we have the power to do that yeah, and I like you say, like I don't want to throw it on everybody, but I think that's you know for somebody to be like, I don't feel those feelings. Like, right. Nah, you're lying to yourself. Like yeah. we all have those moments. Like you're in the you're somewhere alone, and you have like these moments that you're just like, oh, fuck, my reality in this place is limited. You know, you're. You know, I remember when the first time I had that emotion, like, holy shit, we're gonna die. Like we're gonna, we're mortal. Like, Isn't that scary? It's scary. Isn't that weird? It's a scary feeling, <laughs> and it's like it can be overwhelming, but at the same time, depending on how you look at it. It can also be very liberating. Absolutely. You know, because it lets you see like, holy shit, I only do have this amount of time. Like, let me do something that I like, you know, let me fucking chase my hobbies or whatever it is, you know, because again, you know, it sounds cheesy, but we only get it. We only get one chance that we're right now fully aware of, you know, if, yeah, if you come back in the next life or you're just in the abyss, I mean, fucking that's, yeah. that moment's going to be there. And then that moment's going to have its time, you know, yeah. right now it's what you got. I don't, I don't, I'm don't know exactly where you are on like the religion spectrum but mm -hmm. sometimes i feel that certain religions i won't cherry pick on which ones yeah. but there's certain religions that do not allow people that follow them to experience that this is the only life that mm -hmm. they have that they're 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 thinking about their their goal on the way to the pearly gates yeah and that's all they think about is doesn't matter what I do. I'm I'm gonna be semi okay in this life, but it doesn't matter because when I die, I'm going to heaven, mm -hmm. and that's when I can truly be happy. But in that case, like you don't know. It's a prison, man. It's you a don't. You don't. Prison. You don't know. Like, uh, of course, there. There's like you. You. You do something bad. You ask for forgiveness, and then move on. Mm -hmm. And I. I don't know. Like, what do. You, what do you think about religion? Well, like, like, in the, when you t say like that, like, oh, I can just, like, you know, what's is it repent? Like, I repent my sins, right? Yeah, like, sure. I mean, but at what point you can only use that so much? Like, it sometimes mm -hmm. it bothers me that people use that because, like, if you can just easily just say, oh, I'm sorry, Father, like, please forgive me. Yeah, like you're just who's absolving all your stuff? Like, you know, the ent this entity that you believe in. Like, are you fully taking responsibility for your own self? Like you said. If if I'm gonna keep doing these behaviors, at some point I'm just an asshole. Like mm -hmm. I'm not a holy person because I keep telling God to forgive me. Yeah, you know. But um, me personally, I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a, I'm not not a fan. You know, I believe mm -hmm. that there's something spiritual, but okay, I I'm not the person who will go and just 
listen to somebody tell me what their interpretation of this is you know like to me that's ultimately what it is like we're all human like at least these guys were like legit on some heavy ass fucking drugs like mm-hmm. which the i have burn- a theory by the way the burning bush <laughs> <laughs> which you know, i do <laughs> you know i'm just like yeah cool but at the end of the day we're still a bunch of random people who just sat down and wrote some notes on um, based mm-hmm. on something that we thought was our experience and now we're trying to interpret this experience into a fucking mass of people yeah so that's to me is a little it gets a little blurry with that gotcha yeah. i wouldn't say that i'm for any religion i don't want to say god is dead but i would also say like like don't hate me for people but like we Loki could be like gods ourselves, man. You know, like we have the ability to create stuff. Like, mm-hmm. like whether you like it or not, like, you know, everything around us, what you're listening to, what you're driving, and everything has come from our ability to tap into this consciousness that allows us to create shit, to mold our reality to what we need, you know? And here we are in front of a camera. So people want to consume shit. Like we made this happen, you know, like, can that not be called, power that god has creating you know like it gets worried and people will be like no you're not god i know i know i'm not saying i am but yeah. i'm saying like we all have the capability to create whether you're an artist whether you're a florist whatever it is like we can create things and that in itself is a power you know i would say absolutely yeah i mean two uh two things like the spiritualism did you think about any spiritualism even before your psychedelic experience or was it something that you kind of like tapped into during an experience uh it was a little bit before and like yeah i've I've always just been interested in the whole like death thing like Mm -hmm. at some point i was just so scared i I watched the show called um i think 100 ways to die or 500 ways to die Mm -hmm. it's like the show that just shows how people thousand one thousand is it one thousand ways to die (laughs) did i watch i binge watched that show and i was so paranoid afterwards like dude i don't want to walk on that dude you could die from anything dude (laughs) Dude, it's scary but but that's the whole what what i'm trying to like explain is that like you you can be your own prisoner in your mind you know you can think that all these bad shit's gonna happen and that's gonna scare you from doing things in life or you can be like Holy shit, I know what things to avoid, but I'm still going to enjoy my life, you know? Yeah. Like, I went skydiving, and uh, that, to me, was a very big moment, because I'm scared of heights. But it was like a character break for me, where I was like, you know what? I want to do it. I did it. Looked over the fucking plane. Damn. Scary. Like, oh, fuck. How high were you in the sky? It was like 20,000 feet. Damn. Yeah, man, it was high. It was uh, it was high, and I was high, just to clarify that. <laughs> It's like if I'm a fucking splatter on the floor, at least I'll be stoned. Like, pfft. damn. But yeah, man. Um, it was a, it was, and that in itself is like a even a little mind fuck. You know, mm-hmm. it's just you're just dropping. You don't feel the belly feeling like the ah, when you're falling. Really, it just feels like you're having a bunch of air just blow on you, and you're just like whoa. And then you see that, dude. Once you once the parachute deploys, yeah. you can just glide. And I started crying, dude. And I was like, dude, this is beautiful. Like, you see how insignificant little things are. Like, yeah. from up there, you just, it, there's nothing to fucking worry about, you know? And then it's not until you start realizing that little things that happen throughout your day that bother you. It's like, dude, these are insignificant, insignificant things in the scope of just the fucking planet that yeah. we live in, you know? S- super insignificantly small. And you're just like, holy fuck, man, this is... You come back and you're like, damn, I'm glad to be on earth, you know, touch the floor. Yeah. And you're just grateful for a bunch of shit for a while. You know, it's like kind of like, like a post little high after that with like psychedelics. And you're like, you know, I think I can appreciate life more, you know, and like just kind of like these little things that I guess it depends on the person. If, you know, if, if you're the type of person that's kind of susceptible to kind of like these kind of thoughts, I think it makes it easier for you to kind of enjoy it and just see more than what more people, most people see. Yeah. But, um. It's definitely a, like one of those things. So I, I like chasing, I like chasing my fears. You know, like fuck, I feel like hesitating for this stuff. Like something tells me that I gotta kind of push through. You know, and you know what they say, like uh, something is on the other side of hap- or fear, something like that. Like change is on the other side of fear, or something like that. It's like a saying, but I personally think like take that too hard a lot because you know sometimes when you're scared of something, it means that there's gonna be change involved. But change can be good, you know? Absolutely. And if you're just kind of stuck just not doing anything and afraid of taking these things, you know, you're just going to be, you know, a prisoner to yourself. 
And that's worse because, you know, that's you're putting your own chains. There's something that I learned from uh, Leo from um, Self Actualization, some YouTube channel that I used to follow. Or I still follow him. And he has this concept in there where and he does like all these self-development videos and he has like a concept in like some of his videos and his teachings that the one thing to acing life is being uncomfortable Mm -hmm. whether it's in certain uh situations whether it's in certain conversations Always try to go for the uncomfortability because it makes everything else in life easier. Easier. Yeah. No, I definitely agree on that. Yeah. I think I've, I've, I think I know who you're talking about too. Um, cause that, the message kind of resonates with me. Let's pull up, um, self actualization on YouTube. Leo is fucking amazing, dude. I've listened to and watched his stuff since like 2016, like 2015, 2016. (laughs) And he's fucking. Some he, people just know how to deliver, it, you know. Yeah, he's a G, dude. Actualization. There we go. Where is Leo? There he is. Actual actualize dot org. Oh yeah. Um. Okay. Hip subscribe on that, dude. I don't know why I'm not. There we go. He's fucking sick, dude. Yeah, he has all this like yeah. life what advice. What is actualized.org? <laughs> Crazy. <ass. laughs> it's such a gargantuan question. I don't even know where to begin. But I guess I could summarize it as this. Actualized.org is a catalog. For those of you who are new, it's a catalog of the most powerful concepts that I have pursued and studied and discovered in my own life in order to make sense of what life and reality are and how to live the best life possible. It's focused specifically on the biggest picture perspective. What you'll find out there, if you're getting into self-help and self-improvement advice. Yeah, actually, I started listening to him when I was studying self-development. And mostly what you get within all these different subfields are narrow specialists who give you a little bit of advice about this narrow region of your life or that narrow region of your life, whether it's business advice, relationship advice, family advice, career advice, emotional advice, advice about your addiction problems or your weight problems or your money problems or whatever else. And don't get me wrong, all of that is very useful and good, but as I entered into self-help originally, just for myself, not as a teacher or as a coach or as some guru, but just for my own self when I got into it maybe 15 years ago, when I first discovered it, maybe when I first picked up my first Tony Robbins book, it was great. But the problem that I had from the very beginning is that it wasn't holistic enough. It didn't really give me the understanding. The depth was lacking. Nobody brought all the different puzzle pieces together into one cohesive image. Nobody really wanted to understand reality for reality's sake. They were just providing advice for how to satisfy some personal petty need like money or sex or love or whatever. And those are fine to satisfy those, but I wanted something more. And as I started reading all these different books and all these learning from all these different teachers, taking courses and workshops and so on, I, started encountering various no affiliation concepts, by the way i'm just almost sharing this. principles by which one <laughs> hover over and see how long this video is because that and i started making notes and oh yeah these down. i'm not watching i'm not trying to watch the hour and fucking 30 minutes of all of these and uh, okay. d- yeah. search us on self-actualization um put um uh a th- uh, thing to ace life or acing life things to acing life oh uh, i think uh, could it be that one yeah 
I think it's that one. Yeah, seven years ago. Hey, this is Leo for actualized.org. And in this episode, I want to give you one really simple rule for acing life. Yeah, this is one simple rule for acing life. Fucking seven years ago, dude, I remember this video Damn. first came out. Okay, so this rule is so super simple, so stupidly simple, that it's really profound in how its tentacles reach out into every aspect of your life. This is a big one. This is huge right here. But it's very simple. And because it's so simple, you might overlook it and you might dismiss it as just like, oh, I kind of already knew that. But I encourage you to actually stick with me here and to contemplate the significance of what I'm about to tell you, because this is a very significant and a very profound insight. Tell me. Here's the rule. <laughs> the one rule that Here you need Here for facing life. Always do what's emotionally most difficult. Okay, there we go. Mm, that's okay. that that hits it. Always do the thing that's emotionally most difficult to do in whatever situation you find yourself in. This is the exact opposite. If you take a moment to think about it, the exact opposite of what most people do. It's the exact opposite of what you do in almost every situation. And this is the mother of all screw ups and problems and frustrations in life is this. What most people do is they do the exact opposite in the sense that they're looking. Rewind it. I want to hear it right before we end the video. <laughs> and comfortable and <laughs> Rewind thing it. that they can do in life. Because I have to remember that because I say it fucking totally wrong. And I've been saying it wrong for the past three years. You will be ashamed of you right now. Yeah. Okay. Most replay. There we go. Press play. And frustrations in life is this. What most people do is they do the exact Oh, wait, wait. No, go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. They're looking. Say, I, I want him to say it again. Rewind it back. Just until he says it. <laughs> Big one. This is huge here we right go. here. But it's very simple. And because it's so simple, you might overlook it and you might dismiss it as just like, oh, I kind of already knew that. But I encourage you to actually stick with me here and to contemplate the significance of what I'm about to tell you. Because this is a very significant and a very profound insight. Here's the rule. The one rule that you need for acing life. Always do what's emotionally most difficult. Always do what's emotionally Always difficult. Always do the thing that's emotionally most difficult okay, pause it. to do in whatever. So always do what's emotionally. Always do the thing that's emotionally difficult thing to do. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the concept that I've been fucking up for the past three years yeah pretty close you got pretty close it was, right i, yeah, I think yeah. it was pretty close the always do what's what did i say that was wrong always do the most uncomfortable thing but the most if you think yeah. about it that's the thing that we do mostly like we we chase other things that are comfortable mm -hmm. right change yeah. comes from or growth there we go growth comes from being uncomfortable yeah yeah, that that's a big thing, and that's why I feel like I like chasing these things sometimes. You know, it's like you just gotta know, you gotta learn, you gotta know yourself, man. You gotta learn yeah. to understand yourself. You know, so many you have people around you, but like, can somebody fully understand you? You know, like maybe not to a hundred percent, but like, do you understand yourself? Like, yeah. Oh shit! Like, I don't. Why do I do the things I do? You know, like, what led me here? Or well, why oh, do yeah. I continue to do this behavior or something? Yeah. You know, that's the only thing that we can answer for ourselves. Yeah, I ask myself all the time, like <sighs> when I when I make dumb decisions, when I make good decisions, like how how did I how did I get to this point in my life? My choices, mm -hmm. like we have choices. That's the beauty of this life. We have choices. Whether we make bad choices, we make good choices. Mm -hmm. I like to think 
or I, for me, it, they're not good choices. They're not bad choices. They're just generally choices that we have. We make them either good. We make them either bad. Yeah. And that is all um, subjective. Like a lot of things that we think about that we do are all subjective. That's very true. Right? Because what can be good for somebody else may necessarily not be good for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's where the, the I think that's fine line, man. Because, uh, you know, if you do so many things for somebody, you lose yourself too, you know? It's like, and if you don't, then it's like, are your relationships streamed? Like, I don't know, man. It's like this. Yeah. Like we were I, saying I, at the top of this, dude, you have relationships with everything. Yeah. Not just people. You have relationships with yourself, with the relationships with the, the thoughts that you have for yourself. Are those healthy? You have to fuck think about that too. Yeah. And that's, I think, what a lot of people try to avoid. They don't like, even, you know, you don't have to physically do something uncomfortable, but like, if this, is, is there something in your mind that you don't like going to? You know, like, if there is, why don't you like doing it? Like, what's stopping you from kind of like healing yourself from it? You know, mm. that's what I like, like to see with like, uh, or like to hear when, when people kind of like, they chase that stuff with inside themselves. Like, hey, like you know, I, like I felt like this was my ending point or like this was like my fucking rock bottom. But like, how did you come out of it? You know, like, yeah. and that to me interests me because it just shows that people can, you know, persevere, perse- persevere through all this stuff, you know, yeah. or, or find ways of just kind of moving forward, facing that uh, again. To me, it's just that cycle, like a hero's journey. You know, you start off your journey Oh, confident and stuff. Then you end up fucking fighting like this demon and all this stuff. And then you come out as a hero, fucking more noble, more like understanding about your whole experience. And it's just like a cycle like that. You yeah. Know? It's like, so I think, I think it was a Greek part of like the Greek stuff, like the whole hero's journey. It's in different cultures too, but that's where I, I saw it from like that whole, that's why a lot of those stories revolved. Yeah. Around, you know? And then plus a lot of everything is transitory everything is is transitioning it's it's temporary yeah everything whether it's good or whether it's bad is temporary it's i learned temporary. that in in uh this book in that i was that i was reading in fucking high school dude i read that book and dude the concept it, it's called siddhartha and it talks about um well siddhartha buddha mm-hmm. the the buddha in um in the indian culture and um, it, it just talks about like his life and his upbringing as a child, and and that like that was the main concept that I took like when I was around seventeen, eighteen years old, was that a lot of things are temporary. Yeah, and that's it. That's just it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it, 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 and w- w- you got to think about it. Like you're having a you're in a rough spot, bad spot whatever it's temporary Mm -hmm. and it's not a good spot it's not a bad spot it's just a spot it feels like it's not gonna end of course but it will like it it will end like whatever it is you know like you said you have to have the you know it's like they say you have to have the lows the highs you Mm -hmm. have to have everything in between because that that's what makes a full experience yeah be able to enjoy the good experiences because you have the bad and vice versa you know like when you're in a bad situation you're like fuck i had a good you know, and you work <laughs> towards bettering yeah. that situation, you know? Yeah. And then plus you, you get to, you get, like knowing what something is, the next thing, the next time it comes around, mm-hmm. you have a better appreciation for that. For sure. And I think if you practice that, like I've definitely seen that part of me kind of uh, mature. Like in, uh, if something's wrong, if something happens or something, you know, something that shits on your day, you're like, oh, fuck. I've become better at like, Fuck it. I'm find a solution. Like Im- yeah. almost immediately sometimes. Like, okay, what happened? Let me figure it out now. Like, let me figure out the next step already. Cause yeah. you know, before I was like, oh dude, like I fucked up. Yeah, or, just fo- focusing on the problem rather than being yeah. solution driven. Yeah, because uh, you know, you know at, at that point you know that this moment's not gonna last. This moment's not gonna be bad forever. So you're like, I'm gonna skip through the whole part where I'm just like, oh, like, you know, <laughs> feeling it. I was like, dude, yeah, I know stre- I'm feel the way. Stressing about it for no reason. Like, it already happened. Like, yeah. oh, wow, you can't go back and change it. Might as well just look for something exactly. to fix it. <laughs> and that's how I've been able to kind of like, I feel like 
again, cl- clear my stuff up, kind of cleanse myself, kind of uh, just just do a reset, you know, and just find again, at, at least with the podcast sake, at this point, just try to find a new direction for it. Well, kind of just bringing something new and uh, just, again, for the people who stuck around, the OGs, you know, they're going to be like, what? Yeah. Eddie. Yeah, man. Thanks, man. Hey, thank you for having me, Joe. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you so thanks, much. dude, for coming out of uh, retirement. Nine months retirement. Uh, back on a podcast. I could have had a baby by now. You know? I can't wait. Yeah. I, I can't wait to... Uh, you back dude i yeah, appreciate no, it no, hey thank you for having me you're yeah. I, this is the only show i've been on the last nine months that's fucking cool twice, so hey i appreciate it thanks man uh what can we look up to share for everybody um uh, if you want to do i'll do a little sneak peek here because i don't think i talked about it this time but okay nft collection is dropping off or dropping soon guys so gil you're getting a monkey just letting you know oh sweet we'll okay. give you a free nft uh, all right. Go to uh, Google. Let's see. Can so we... if you do uh, Twitter, just type in the social primate experiment. Let's see if it comes up still. Um, but yeah, that's going to be. Uh, got that on Twitter asking you to log in. Do we have to sign in? <sighs> I hope not. But if if, it, if it, you do, don't worry. You, you don't got to. Twitter. But Twitter is a little weird with their stuff. But you can put the social primate And then uh, uh, primate experiment. Oh, oh yeah, like that primate. That first one right there, the, oh, that one. See if it even opens up. So that's the Ooh. that's the one for the NFT. So okay, sneak peeks. People were gonna drop some new stuff, and then just moving forward, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna still gonna show my face, but I'm trying to make the podcast a little like animated, man. Oh, okay. So that monkey's going to be the main character. It's going to be oh, my shit. voice, but that monkey's going to be the, the character. Oh, my God. And all my guests are going to be their monkey that they get. Oh, that's fucking cool. So I, I'm, I'm, it's fuck, it's a bunch of moving pieces, man. I'm doing this alone, but I'm trying to make sure that this gets moving. Uh, that's kind of my way to kind of make sure my podcast is like back fucking full force. Like, what the fuck? NFT collection? Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, just for people to expect new episodes, like, they're gonna go raw. That's it's fucking gonna, cool. You know, things are changing. Dude, that's badass. Yeah. I'm fucking excited. Excited for you. I can't even speak right now. <laughs> that's fucking cool, Thanks, dude. Man. Yeah. So you know, uh, again, people who notice this, they're gonna want. If they want to do it, they're gonna be in it. If not, you know, be cool. And then, uh, dude, if you need any help with anything, yeah, I'm always here, man. Just reach out and fuck like anything, dude. Thanks, man. Likewise. Any, anything I can I can help out with to, to get this. You know, started whatever, out promoting it, whatever, man. Thank you. I do. You got I appreciate me. it so much. I'm man, here. For reals. I'm here, bro. Um, but dude, that was fucking awesome, man. I, yeah. I'm glad to get you out here and and finally meet you in person and and uh, do the podcast, do the mind buzz in person. And thank you all for listening. Thank you, YouTube. You're watching, but you're not subscribing and. You're not subscribing and you're not liking, you're not commenting. So I know, I know you're, you're out there. I know you're out there. And the people on Spotify know this too. They're scared. They're scared. So go through the fear. Go through the fear. Just go through it. it. It's fine. It's not a good experience. It's not a bad experience. It's just (laughs) one big experience. It's the mind buzz experience. Eddie. Thank you, man. Thanks for coming out. And that's it. The Mind Buzz. Thanks for listening to the Mind Buzz podcast. Subscribe to the Mind Buzz YouTube channel and watch full podcast episodes. Keep up with the hosts, guests, and upcoming events by following the Mind Buzz on Instagram at the Mind Buzz. See you on the next one.